Greetings, the Astro 30 here, and today I'm going to be telling you in this short video how to play with yourself in three simple steps. <laughs> Okay, and with the uh, soldering iron ready to go, let's look at what it is I'm going to be constructing today. This is a kit from JCAR Electronics. It's a garbage and recycling reminder kit. And it was released in January of 2013. Uh, its catalogue number is KC5518 for those playing at home. And basically what this does is it reminds you which bin to put out on which week with some flashing LEDs and such. And it's, it's, it's using a, a PIC uh, microcontroller, pre-programmed. Um, and it, uh, you can actually program it to uh, up to four bins and to be set weekly or fortnightly or alternative week cycle, um, whatever that means. But we'll read the instructions a little bit uh, more in depth there. Um, it, you have to do some case processing. That's uh, basically the same as that um, in-circuit transistor tester I had. You have to drill all the holes in the case to accept the LEDs and etc. Uh, so let's get the package open and have a look at what we got. So take that off. And we've got a button cell uh, battery holder here, which I assume is for a battery backup or maybe to power the thing. I think it would be to power the thing actually. I wouldn't have thought that it would have drawn that much power. Um, yeah, because this is the size of the case. It's only a small case and it's a HB6015 um, you know, little mini jiffy box. A tiny Nicely plated, double-sided PCB. If we look at the text on the solder mask, it says one, alternative, now, two, alternative, next, and open, weekly. So that goes for these two pins here, I assume, or these three pins anyway, of what you set it to. So that's how you would program it, by putting jumpers across either one of those pins or leaving them open which is probably not the best programming method in the world, but yeah, it works. Hopefully it's just like a header or something where you can just remove a jumper, um, you know. But we'll soon see when we get into it a little bit more. This is the uh, front panel artwork. Um, it doesn't look like, yeah, it doesn't look like it's uh, got routed things around here where the holes of the screws would go because you'd normally stick that on the the, the, the front part, the, the bit where you put the screws through. But uh, yeah, we'll have a look at that in a little bit more depth. Um, yeah, that's actually a badly printed label. Um, I wanted colour. And of course we've got the instruction booklet. So, with our bag of components, that's nothing. So, for those playing along at home, here is the schematic. It's a PIC 16 LF88. I believe that's supposed to be a or dash uh, slash P uh, microcontroller. Uh, got uh, four buttons. Well, actually, one button, two button, three, four, five buttons. And then several sets of link wires here, which I, I just did previously point out on the circuit board. And you would set them to whatever you want. And it reiterates here, link 1 to 4, 1 equals alternative week now, 2 alternative week next, open equals weekly. So, yeah, it's going to be a little bit confusing. Um, but uh, you've got this switch here, which is clear program. And then these sets of four switches here, which I'm not sure what exactly they do. Um, hmm. So, without going too much on the schematic, uh, it's, it's basically a microcontroller with you know a bunch of inputs. It's, there's nothing much really to explain. 
uh, it's all got uh, code written inside the chip that controls what it, all the things it does. So um, it's just basically a bog standard PIC circuit layout. But what I'm I'm more interested in is these um, link wires of how and where you set them and how it knows what day it is. That's my main concern. There is a set of text here that says link inputs. Uh, there are four link options designated LK1 to LK4. In this case their corresponding inputs are RA4, RA6, RA7 and RA10. Do not have pull up internal pull up resistors. This is because blah blah blah. I'm um, not sure exactly what they're talking about there. Um, I don't want to make this video too long on going through instructions but once I've actually re-read this uh, section of um, text here uh, when we come to assemble the board, I'll, I'll go through what they actually mean. Because um, at the moment I'm a little bit, little bit confused um, as to what you're supposed to set to what. I mean, I can read basic English and I can ascertain that, yeah, they mean leave it open for this. But without, you know, a breakdown or a graph of something, um, it can make it confusing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the instructions thoroughly before I assemble it and then we'll get into assembling it and I'll talk you through um, as, as good, best as I can what they're talking about. Okay, yes, the link wires are actually jumpers by the looks of things. Uh, see the boxes so you can actually pull them out and put them in different various different positions. Uh, to set the settings you want, I did read the description about the link wires and everything and what it did with the IC. Uh, but to the person constructing it, it's really not that important of information to um, pass on. So yeah, those link wires are changeable, so you don't have to hard solder it. Um, just looking for where those parts would be. Because I can't actually see any headers. Or anything. Oh, there's the, there's the headers there. Um, and the jumpers. Alright, yep, so we've got a, a header pin which you just cut off uh, 3 by 3 and then you just use the, the uh, four jumpers provided. Now, I guess the thing would be to assemble it and now I would start with mounting all the low profile components on this side which is the resistors and the IC socket and any diodes that are required then the tactile switches I would leave the LEDs to last because they're mounted on this side they've got to pass through the case so you've got to get the um, distance through the hole correct otherwise it will look strange or the board won't fit so yeah what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up and I'm going to start with the resistors first and then uh, yeah we'll move on from there. Okay just one more thing before I get started um, assembling is I was reading uh, the introductory text and it did say something about what about monthly co collections? Well this reminder cannot do that unfortunately. So if your bin collection is monthly on say green waste or recycling or whatever uh, other uh, bins that you have collected that are done monthly it can't do it its maximum is fortnightly so just keep that in mind before you buy this kit if you want it to remind you in a month when to put a bin out it's not going to do it so we're going to get started I'm going to do this in time lapse because well some of you may enjoy that some of you may not but uh, yeah let's get started
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this 9 volt battery as a form of spacer, poor man's spacer. I'm going to take the circuit board and I'm going to just put it in there and lay it on top of the battery. But now that there's a resistor in there, it makes it awfully difficult. As I said, they should be, it should be a square drilled board anyway, so I'm going to lay it this way up, it doesn't really matter. And so I've got a little bit of leeway there, I can move from side to side, so I want to get that as central as possible. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the drill bit into the drill, and I'm going to drill down through the holes, preferably without this circuit board moving too much, and uh, get get the holes drilled that way. Uh, being ABS plastic, if I need to enlarge the hole slightly to one side just to make it f fit central or whatever, that's what I do. But you've got to try and get this as central as possible. And I'm just trying to think of what I can jam down the side of these pillars to keep it central. So why don't I use a bit of this cardboard uh, that came with the kit uh, and make myself um, little, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, spaces? No, not spaces. Uh, packing. That's what I'm looking for. To pack the edges in. So that's probably a bit too big. So I'll cut him off. And just put it around the pill each pillar corner. Uh, just to pull the board out as central as possible so it doesn't move when drilling. I mean, this may seem like a little bit of a overkill task here, but if you want something to look right when it's finished, you kind of have to do this sort of thing. So, uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. It makes the video long and boring, yes I know, but uh, coming up with ideas like this is what may, separates people who just slap things together and actually people who think about things. Well, I'm one of these uh, analytical thinkers that like to think more uh, clearly about things. Of Now how am I going to keep this perfectly straight so that when I go to do the front panel artwork side of things and drilling the uh, the front everything just lines up perfectly well you do things like this and that board is not going to move side to side anymore so now I can get a drill bit and a block of wood it's not exactly uh, level it is now and just drill out the holes Right, now I'm going to go gung-ho here with a 2.5mm drill bit and just go, go for it. Um, and then drill it to 3 afterwards. But if you're not confident in getting things right the first time by doing things like this, don't do it. Okay, those are 2.5 millimeter holes, not three, because the three millimeter drill bit wouldn't fit through the holes in the PCB. So I can now remove the PCB and the battery and all the junk. And now we have our four holes roughly where they need to be. So now we just enlarge them to the correct size, which is three. Now I'm glad I stopped myself before soldering in the rest of those resistors. When I noticed there was a problem mounting the LEDs and I did read the instructions and it says the four resistors under the LEDs will make it impossible to install the LEDs, so don't install them. It's exactly what the text in construction details said. So as I say, it pays to read the instructions. Because I was getting a little bit confused. And 
Well, I didn't uh, uh, read the instructions and uh, I didn't end up doing the time lapse yet. But that's all the drilling that we should need to do for now. Uh, now to do the second part of that uh, exercise, after I put the drill sites out of the way, is to uh, mount the spacers. Now the next part is it says an M3 by 15 millimeter screw is then inserted from the outside of the box, um, which doesn't look to me like they even provide 15 millimeter screws, nor do they provide any 15 millimeter tape tapped uh, nylon spacers. I think J-Card did it a little bit differently. But for all intents and purposes, I'm going to do the way the instructions say. But they don't have any 15mm spaces. Uh, either way, I think it would be less ugly having the screws going out the back than it is um, having them come out the front. So we take an M15, uh, sorry, an M3 by 15mm screw. Place it through the box and lose it. And then they want you to take an M3 nut. That's an M4. Uh, where's my M3 nuts? No, it is M3. I'll have more than that. So you take an M3 nut. And somehow try and get it on there. This is going to be fairly fiddly, but it can be done. And I can't really see with glasses on. Oh, that's annoying. That is really frustratingly annoying. Okay, so when all else fails, you get a screwdriver, wherever that's buggered off to, and uh, hold the sc screw still. Hell. Get the nut, hold the screw still, and get it started like that. Just screw it up, and then you're going to have to get it tight anyway. Um, if you were using countersunk ones, you would countersink the holes with an oversized drill bit. I'm not. Uh, <coughs> And it's a fairly long thread, so it's going to take a while. Okay, that's bottomed out. Get a pair of pliers. And then we tighten the screw. There we go. And then what they want you to do is grab another M3 nut. Put it on top of the first one. So, and then obviously tighten it if you can, so it's not completely loose. Which may seem half right, now that's tight. And then they want you to get an M3 uh, tapped 15 millimeter long spacer. And that should give you roughly 19.5 up the case. So I have got some, so I've got to go find them. Okay, where the f are you? Well, there's things in here. That's annoying. Okay, and some 15mm nylon spacers. You need four of them. They did provide us with 5mm ones, I think they are. But again, that's for mounting it through the front panel. Um, I don't really want to do that. Uh, I've got these four here. All right. And then take that. Screw that over the bolt that you just inserted. 
with the two nuts. Which may prove a bit challenging because it's very close to the edges. Um, yeah, I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, that's because I used a 20mm uh, nut. 20mm bolt, it's too long. Okay, I'll use a 10mm, that should be more than enough. And with a little patience, a short time later, after you've done all four sides, uh, you should have something that looks like that. So then, the board going the right way up, would sit in there something like that, and you'd put the uh, four mounting screws through. And uh, so yeah, that's that part of it done. Now what we need to do is assemble the circuit board by these four 1K resistors. So let's get cracking. Just before I start, um, I suppose you could insert the 1N4148 in uh, diodes, but they are going to be very close to these solder pads. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Okay, now that that uh, stage is done, all the components are soldered on the top side of the board. What they want you to do now is install the LEDs about four millimeters away from the board, and there's, they say to use a piece of cardboard to ensure the correct alignment. But it also says make sure that it, the correct color goes in the correct place, and because these LEDs are all clear lens. 
Um, how do we know what colour is what? Well, we can make up a simple little test jig to find out. Okay, so I've got a breadboard here with a 10k dropping resistor and an LED inserted. Cathode is over here on my left and the anode's over here and a 9 volt battery. So all I need to do is just touch the cathode or the LED and that one happens to be orange. So that's an orange one. Or is it red? No, it's orange or amber. So we can assume that to be yellow. So I'll put yellow up there somewhere. That one's green. That one's red. So red can go over far left. Blue. Okay, so now I've got blue, green, and orange and red so I don't need this test circuit anymore uh, so I've got blue yeah, blue red green yellow I think I've got it in that order I'm gonna have to test them again because I've now forgotten so I've marked on the uh, cardboard that came with the uh, kit here red yellow green blue now we don't have blue bins in Tasmania, but we do have green for green waste, yellow for recycling, and well red can be the uh, normal rubbish bin. So that's the order I'm going to put them in from one, two, three, four um, in the board. But now we need to keep it four millimeters above the board. Oh, for sake, I'm sick of shit going on the floor. All right, so. We've got, uh, I've got the board around the correct way for me. So I'm just going to place each LED respectively in its correct hole. If I can pick the things up and not lose the bloody thing somewhere. All right, take two on that. So longer lead goes to the anode position. So I just place that in the hole like that. Get the next one, do the same thing. Get the next one, do the same thing. Get the next one and do the same thing, putting it the correct way around. Now, how to keep it four millimeters, which is roughly that, above the board whilst soldering? Well, what we need to do is find something that's four millimeters in diameter, so I can take a drill bit, maybe, place that under the side of the LED, and possibly tack one side from the top, one side that I can get to, just to hold it in position. And then I can move on to the next one. Of course, make sure you've got your orientation of your LEDs correct first before doing this. Because once you do this, you're committed. So that seems to be a different height than the last one. Not sure exactly why there, and that won't stay still. And at this point, I'm just guessing roughly where they go, but I'm using the drill bit as a guide. As long as I get them all roughly the same height, it's not going to be an issue. That's actually going to stay there. And of course, you solder it properly when you're done. Oops, that didn't work out the way I wanted it to. Alright, so at this point you can double check your alignment 
and get all the LEDs roughly in the right height that you want them. This is pretty much guesswork at this stage, but I mean it doesn't have to be overly critically accurate, but as long as the LEDs are all roughly the same height from the board and have roughly the right clearance, uh, it should be fine. That one doesn't want to um, move. Some strange reason. Okay, just put my drill bit away now that I know that they're in the position I need them. I can now commit and solder them. And they should be in the right position where I need them. Don't forget to solder the pins you tacked in, or else you're going to end up with a bad joint. And of course, clip off the excess. I mean, with the capacitors and diodes and stuff now already installed, it does make this awfully difficult. It would have been nice if they'd uh, reversed the instructions a little and made you do this task first without everything else in the way, but they didn't. So then, I guess the next step would be to put the 1Ks in now, now that we can. Uh, or else that's not going to work either. And you're going to be in a solder joint, so I'm just going to leave it slightly higher off the board. So they don't have to be flush with the board, because you can't anyway. So, I'm just going to put them in. Until they're a little bit away from the solder joint of the LED. Z with an S. And this one's going to be fun because um, there's solder in the hole on this one. So I might just solder these first three one Ks in first. And now there's an LED in the way. Isn't that convenient? So that just... Now I need to try and get this 1K in through its hole. So I'll start one end off. And turn him around again. And the other way, why I'm going to do that is I'm going to heat the lead of the resistor that needs to go through the hole. And that should allow me, if I don't bend it, to actually push it through the hole. I started it now. Now I can just uh, continue heating that leg until the resistor goes through. Now at this point I may need some extra help here. So I'll turn him around. It. Okay, so that resistor is now in, albeit at a crooked angle. Let's see if I can push that out a bit. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe f yourself. Okay, I suppose it doesn't really particularly matter at this stage. Uh, so I'll leave it like that and um, solder the leads in of the resistor. Okay. And trim off the excess leads. And now that's that stage done. 
Let's make sure that none of those resistor leads are coming in contact with the diodes, which they're not. So, so far we should have something that looks like that. Uh, there is a 1N404 to install, but that's kind of in the way of the clamp at the moment. So the next stage would be to install the tactile switches. And as far as I'm aware with these things, it doesn't matter which way around you put them, they're not polarized. So it's just a simple matter of popping them in the holes. Which might prove a little bit challenging to start with. So try the next one. Now, if you're having trouble installing these switches, just take a pair of pliers and take the kink out of the legs. That's uh, to make it give a clip in feel to the circuit board so they don't fall back out, but it also can make it difficult inserting them. So if you remove the kink, you can get the switch in. So that's what I'm gonna do for all the rest of the other three switches. And then we can solder them in. I'll just solder one leg of each to make sure, just to make sure that the um, alignment of the switches are correct and like, you know, flush with the board, etc. Before going gung-ho and actually soldering the rest in. Yep, they look all straight to me. So, I'll just solder the rest of the pins. And there's the switches installed. Okay, next I'm going to install the um, large rectifier diode, the 1N4004 and that pretty much basically completes construction of the electronics anyway uh, and then all we have to do now is do the hard part which is the uh, front panel so I make sure the orientation is correct and then solder him in that now might as well install the microprocessor uh, correct way around I know you shouldn't really handle them directly with your fingers, but I am free of static. There we go. IC is in. And they're using a CR2032 lithium battery. So we might as well pop that in now and actually see what the thing does, if anything. So I'll plug that In. Now we've got a, a green light emitting diode, but it doesn't do anything yet because we haven't got any uh, jumpers installed. So I might stick the jumpers in for now so I don't lose them and then program it properly later. Um, uh, there should be four of them. There is. Yeah, I'm not really sure what that actually is doing. It's just lighting up LEDs at the moment. They're not very bright. There's something in the roof too. Um, okay. Well, that part of it is working somewhat, but. Uh, we'll figure that out in a little, little bit later, but for now, we need to do the front panel. F*** off. Okay, I got the uh, front panel here and I got the rather badly printed label art. Now the thing is, um, they don't have any, well, that's not pre-cut, so 
I don't want that to interfere with the screw holes. So what I might do is I might carefully cut with a pair of scissors around each corner just to um, clear the screws. Because the thing about that um, in-circuit transistor tester that I built, it already had these bits removed. So it made it a lot easier to screw, uh, put to the front panel without having to do any modifications, I'll say, like this. Which is kind of frustrating at the best of times. Now, I'm going to take the backing off of this a little ways. Now, I'm going to not do that. I'm going to line up it as best as possible so that everything looks roughly even. Not overly critical, I mean you can always drill a slightly larger hole for the LEDs and the switches to pass through if things don't line up correctly. There we go. So that's that bit done. Uh, so now I guess uh, we need to drill it. Um, but first I might mount my circuit board into its new home. So I'm going to need, uh, well they didn't give me the correct screws for that, but I'm going to need three screws. I mean four screws. One to start with. And these standoffs being nylon, they will actually flex a little bit if your holes are slightly off. Um, well, I'm going to need to take that back out to do the uh, programming, aren't I? But I will just put the screws in there just loosely so one, I know where they are, and two, I can then use it to line up the top cover part. Yeah, and they're going to stick out a fair ways. So, and I believe. The distance of my LEDs is right because it almost comes up to the top of the switches, so that should just be perfect. So, next step is to drill out these nine holes. Uh, I would say three millimeter will be big enough. Um, yeah, and uh, see if it all lines up, which it should all go in well. So, as I say, if you have to drill like a four millimeter hole along here for the switches to line up, because you can always bend the LED slightly to get them to fit. Next step is to drill it. So I'll come back when I've drilled it. Okay, with all the holes drilled, they look tatty as hell. But, uh, they all do fit through. And the case does close a bit. It's tight, very tight. Could be those uh, screws are a bit big, but uh, yeah. cross that bridge when we come to it. It will go together. I, I might have to change um, change something here. Ooh, ooh, that's uh, that's cute. Uh, so. Take this screw out because I reckon I've used the wrong type of screw. These are a little bit narrower, so they may solve the issue of uh, the case not quite fitting together. I'm not sure why I did that. There we go, that stopped that from happening.
because we just want to make sure that the case fits together and everything, you know. And they gave us countersunk screws, eight of them, to use, so we might as well use them. I think they originally intended it for it to be uh, drilled out through the front panel, but the instructions said the opposite, so, you know, I'm just going with the flow here and making stuff up as I go along. Okay, because the case has its own screws. Um, that should by rights fit together a lot better than it did. Still an issue on that side. I'm not sure why that is not fitting together. That side does. Those screws are still too big. Um, I'm wondering if I've got narrower screws. I'm going to have to investigate this a little bit further. Okay, so I'll muck around with that in a sec. Now, we need to program the schedule. Now, if the links are installed in the number one position, that's number one there, so with that facing like that, set in a position like that, when you look at the circuit board, so the bottom pin is free, that sets it to fortnightly. So if you want, for instance, LED one over here to flash every week, you would simply leave the jumper out altogether. So I might just stick him in like that in the center. So that will flash every week starting from the current week. Now, I want that second one to flash fortnightly. Um, you would install that with that in position one and center. And if you wanted this third LED to flash, LED, sorry, in the alternative week, so that it'd be like next week compared to this one, you would simply move it to position two like that. And that should program it correctly. So this being the normal rubbish bin would flash um, at the start of the week. Uh, every week. This one will flash every second week and this one should flash in between that one. Uh, so if this one was flashing next week this one would flash this week for instance. So you'd know to put out say your green waste bin and whatever you want that set to. So that, I hope that explanation made sense. So that is the first step so the next step would be you want to schedule the programming is to wait until the day you've got to actually put those bins out to do the programming. But the next programming step involves using these push button switches. Um, there are two types of basic switch action. A long press for six seconds or more is for programming the weekly fortnightly reminder sequence. A shorter press for at least one second is for clearing or disabling the reminder LEDs. So if I press that one like that, it would clear it. But if I hold this one down for more than six seconds, six, there we go, it just flashed a bit. Uh, that should now have programmed that to flash at the start of today to, to remind me to put the bin out. So let's try that for this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, and it flashed brighter. That should be programmed, um, but we can't actually see it doing anything yet. So, oh, that's brighter. And so those are all set to flash at the same time. But for now, I can't really test it any further um, because. Uh, I've got to wait the day that it um, needs to uh, remind me. So I may revisit this in another video, but for now I'll just um, clear all by pressing that button so that all the sequences should be erased. And once these start flashing to remind you to put it out, you would then press this for about one second to stop it flashing once you put the bins out so it's not constantly flashing to remind you. But, um, well, this week I've got to put out the normal bin. Uh, 
and I've got to put out the green waste bin. And that's all I should need to do. Now I'm actually thinking, do I need to put the screws in the circuit board? Because, well, after I've just dropped the thing on the floor, these actually have wider, well, standoffs, which should actually come into contact with the board and stop it moving anyway, so... Save messing around trying to get the uh, screws to fit the case. We'll just uh, put the thing together. And, yeah, well, the board's not going to move, is it? So I will now put the screws in for the case and the little stoppers maybe. So that's just the tactile switch is moving around. So the board's not uh, banging back with the boards. So that's all good. Uh, so now that is basically the garbage and recycling reminder. Um, I'd have to have a bit more of a play around with it to um, figure out the programming correctly over the course of the next few weeks and for now I'm just going to stop them from flashing there we go um, that'll probably drain the battery a little bit but yeah because that green one's still lit up and slowly fading away but if I do that again I'll see if that'll reset Yeah, it will, but uh, yeah, it's a little bit silly. Uh, I'm not sure if it was really worth the 28 bucks I spent, but yeah, you know, <laughs> it, 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 it made a little bit of a fun video, I guess, of assembling this, um, well, I don't know, piece of crap. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I'm the Astro 30, and thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to give it a big thumbs up. As I always enjoy thumbs up. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.